Happy, happy Sunday. <clears throat> happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. And happy Sunday, Jill. Happy Sunday. But I want to go back some more. Let's do this. Happy, happy Sunday. Rise and shine. Oh. Rise and shine and give God the glory. Happy Sunday to each and every one of you. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, Jill. Happy, happy Sunday. Good seeing you last night. Had a great time in the presence of the Lord. Happy Sunday to each and every one of you. Happy Sunday, Leslie, missed you. Happy Sunday, good to see you on this morning. Pray for you last night. Blessings to you and to the family in Jesus' name. Happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday. We had an amazing night in the presence of the Lord last night, so we thank and praise God for his goodness, mercy, and his grace. That's always sufficient. Happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, Sister Dawn. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. I feel like I'm crooked. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to you too, Sister Dawn. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Sunday, Carol. Happy Sunday. Oh, okay, Father, we thank you for Sister Carol's sister. Father God, we just released supernatural healing as she goes for surgery on this week. Father, we thank you, Lord, for being her healer. In Jesus' name, cover her, keep her, and strengthen her, and bring her through that surgery. In Jesus' name. Love you, Carol, and miss you. Happy Sunday, Suzanne Marrow. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday. Thank you, Leslie. We missed you too. We missed you too. So we give God praise this Sunday morning. We thank and praise God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Greetings to you too. Monica, if you're listening, happy Sunday to Suzanne and Monica. Happy, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, Bonnie Jackson. Love you and miss you. Blessings and greetings to you and to the family in Jesus' name. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, speaking truth in love. M Minister Steph, happy Sunday. She's on her ministry page. Happy Sunday to each and every one of you that are on this morning. Happy Sunday, Sonia Roundtree. See you tuning in. Happy Sunday, Suzanne, Suzanne Austin Vega. And to Brother Carlos in Jesus' name. Happy Sunday to you in Jesus' name. Happy Sunday, Sonia Roundtree. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Let's put some hearts up for the Lord this morning, giving God hearts of praise and hearts of adoration. Amen. Yep, you are on that page, Minister Steph. Amen. Speaking truth in love. So we thank and praise God. We had an amazing night in the presence of the Lord last night. Awesome teaching through the word of God. Awesome move of God after the service. So we thank and praise God for his goodness, his mercy, and his great grace. Happy Sunday, Denise White Parish. Happy Sunday to you in Jesus name. Let's fill this news feed up with hearts for the Lord, giving God our love and our hearts of praise and hearts of thanksgiving this morning on this Sunday morning, July 21st, 2024. Amen. This month is fastly moving. Oh, Father, we just thank you for Suzanne this morning. We thank you for just bringing healing and wholeness to her Lord in Jesus name. Father, we thank you that you were wounded for her transgressions, that you were bruised for her iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we are healed. So, Lord, we just pray for supernatural healing and strength over Suzanne's body this morning in Jesus' name. And, Father, we pray that she feels, before this day is even over, that she will feel better and better and stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. We speak healing and strength to Suzanne's body in Jesus' name from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, Suzanne Austin Vega. We release God's supernatural healing and strength to you. In Jesus' name, rest and be well.
Thank you, Suzanne Marrow, for sharing. Please press the share button. Uh, thank you, uh, Minister Steph. She said phenomenal message last night. To God be the glory. So we give God praise, glory, and honor for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. We still do meet every Saturday night at 6 p.m. at 69 Myrtle Street, Cranford, New Jersey. We have an amazing time in the presence of the Lord, so we want to encourage you to come be with us on a Saturday night. 5.30 p.m. is prayer. From 5.30 to 6 p.m. is prayer. And 6 p.m. we do start service on time every Saturday night. Uh, and we do have an amazing night in the presence of the Lord. The Sunday morning service is awesome as well. But there's nothing like being in the house of the Lord and being amongst your brothers and sisters in Christ. Where we grow together, learn together, and have a good time in the presence of God. You are very welcome, Suzanne. Be well in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we're going to... Uh, it's 8 o'clock. We have five minutes. We meet every Sunday morning from 7.55 to 8.05 is our meet and greet. Um, 8.05 we begin prayer and then we are usually on for about an hour or less every Sunday morning in Jesus name. So we thank and praise God for his goodness, his mercy and his grace. Happy Sunday, Barbara Roundtree. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday, Pastor Faye. Happy Sunday, Doris Taylor Smith. Amen. Happy Sunday to each and every one of you that are on this morning. In Jesus' name, we have a phenomenal message to encourage you on this faith month. This is a faith month. Who could be the first person to type in faith month? My goal is to fill you full of faith this morning. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. And in the times we're living in, we need our faith to grow and our faith to be stretched like never, ever before. You're going to need your faith in God until we leave this place in Jesus' name. So this is faith month. There it is, faith month. Yep, filling you full of faith. There it is, Suzanne Austin Vega. There it is, Jill. I see you all. All my good students, Doris, I see you. Claudia, happy Sunday, Claudia Carroll. I see you. Faith month. We need our faith charged. We need our faith built up. We need our faith to endure the things that we go through in this life. Hallelujah. As the, woman, as the Lord told the woman with the issue of blood, your faith has made you whole. It's going to be your faith that makes you whole. Amen. Happy Sunday. And uh, I see you, Faith Month, Sonia Roundtree, Faith Month, Suzanne Marrow, Faith Month. Happy Sunday, Mon Doris. Happy Sunday. I got your message. I text you back. Love you and miss you, Mon Doris. We appreciate Mon Doris in Jesus' name. That's right, Barbara Roundtree, Faith Month. If it gets too good, I'll make. we will make August Faith Month too. Because we got to build your faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Glory to God. So we thank and praise God for this Sunday morning. We're going to go into the word of God in three minutes. We're going to start prayer. We meet every Sunday morning from 7.55 to 8.05. It's meet and greet. 8.05 we begin prayer. And we meet every Saturday night in service, in person at 69 Myrtle Street, Cranford, New Jersey, where great things are happening in the great room. Amen. So we invite you to come be with us. Come be casual, be comfortable. We don't dress up. We just come and are casual and just have a good time in the Lord. And we don't stay all night. Amen. So we leave at a good time. So if you want to go out to dinner or you want to catch a movie or something, you still have a lot of time after service to enjoy your Saturday evening. All I want to do is just come home. <laughs> Amen. Yep, I just want to come home and chill. Last night I was exhausted. But I thank God that he's the strength of my life and I got good night's rest ready for today. Amen. <clears throat> so we give God praise, glory and honor in Jesus name. Yes, yes, yes. Come be in the presence of the Lord. In his presence, there's fullness of joy at his right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. Happy, happy Sunday to each and every one of you in Jesus name. We're going to start prayer in two minutes. Happy Sunday, Audrey Williams. Good to have you on this morning. We love you, Sister Audrey. Happy Sunday to you. Amen. Happy Sunday. So we give God praise, glory, and honor. We give him uh, thanksgiving and praise for God is bringing healing and strength to our people and bringing people out of the hospital and uh, doctor's reports are getting good news. So we just thank and praise God that God is a healer. We're going to continue to believe God for healing and deliverance and a breakthrough for God's people. Amen. In this faith month, and we got we have to walk by faith, not just this month, but we have to walk by faith each 
in every day of our life in Jesus name. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is nothing but believing and trusting in God no matter what. No matter what comes, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe you and I take you at your word. Come hella high water, I take you at your word. Amen. 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 Love you, Sonia. Yes. Amen. So we believe in you, uh, Minister Steph, for a good report on Tuesday in Jesus name. Amen. All right, one more minute we're going to start prayer and then we're going to we're going to be on a roll and do what we do and let you go. Pray to everybody. It's a beautiful day. Out. I've been out already had to run a few errands this morning. It's a beautiful day out. It's really nice today. So I pray that everyone has a a blessed Sunday. Happy Sunday, Rachel. Praise God. She said, happy Sunday. Uh, Rachel's in from Australia. She said, happy Sunday, Pastor. Blessing to listen to your preaching every Sunday. And she says, happy Sunday to everybody. See where, thank you, Rachel. And Rachel, press the share button. Let everybody else in Australia hear us in Jesus' name. We're going all around the world through the word. I appreciate you writing that in, Rachel. And we bless you and we thank you for listening. And we're glad that you're blessed. Amen. Well, it's 805 in the worshiping sanctuary and it's prayer time amen so let us pray father we come to you today and we thank you we pray a special prayer this morning even for rachel who's in australia father god we thank you that we're able to not just reach other states but we're able to even go into other countries lord through social media so father we just release your blessings upon rachel and her family this morning in jesus name we thank you father that she was able to tune in and just to listen, Father God, and we pray that you continue to cover her, keep her, and strengthen her. Show yourself mighty to her and show yourself strong, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray for the country of Australia this morning that your will would be done there, that you would save, deliver, and set free, Lord. And we thank you for Rachel in Jesus' name. So Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for another Sunday to give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you that this is the day that you have made, and we come this morning to rejoice and to be glad in it, Lord. We just ask that you would have your way as we are uh, going into your word today. We pray that no one would leave the service the same in Jesus' name. And Father, we just pray prayers of healing for anyone that may be sick in their body, Lord. We thank you that your word declares that you were wounded for our transgressions, that you were bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon you, Lord, and by your stripes we are healed. So Father, we speak healing and strength to those that are listening this morning. We pray for those this morning that may be watching today from work, that you cover them, keep them, and strengthen them while they're working, oh God, in Jesus' name. And Father, as we go into your word, let your word fall on good ground and let it stir us and help us to be doers of your word. Take us from where we are to where you would have us to be. And we thank you for all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's give God praise. Happy Sunday, Sister Gwen. If you received that prayer, just type in amen. Happy Sunday, Sunshine Nessa. Happy, happy Sunday to each and every one of you. Well, this is Faith Month, and we thank and praise God for this Faith Month. Uh, the Lord just put it on my heart to just teach on faith because I believe that there's many areas in all of our lives where we need God to move in, and we're believing God for breakthrough. We're believing God for change. Happy Sunday to you, K Love Father. We just released your continued healing to her mother and to her daughter this morning in Jesus name. Father, we thank you that no weapon formed against her case family shall prosper. And we pray that you continue to bring healing to her daughter, bring healing to her mom and bring healing to this family, Lord, in Jesus name, cover them in your blood. And we thank you for K love today in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. K love, you got to text me. I've been calling you K love so long. I forgot the real name. So, but you're still my K love. So you have to text me that. Amen. Praise God. So um, I just believe that uh, in the times we're living in that we need our faith served like never before. And our faith is just our trusting and believing in God. But sometimes when we're going through trials and sometimes we're going through hardships and sometimes when we're going through things, it's, it's harder. OK, Keisha, there you go. Thank you. OK, it's harder to believe God for his uh, for things to happen and we get discouraged and we get bombarded. So I believe that this faith month, faith month this month, is just good to build our faith and just a reminder. Somebody type in reminder that we got to trust God. Amen. And I'm giving you examples of people that walk by faith when it was hard. Amen. That walk by faith and their faith has made them whole. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to recap. I'm going to do a short recap 
um, of what we've been teaching. I, I love recapping, especially when we're in person. But I'm just going to do a, a short recap of what we've been learning for the past three weeks. And this is the third week. So the first week we talked on um, your faith. Amen. I'm not going to do the whole message or the whole scripture. I'm just going to I'm just going to highlight uh, what we've been teaching on these past few weeks. And if you really what you really need to do, you really need to when you can to keep your faith stirred up. Go back to these teachings. It's right on the um it's right on this page that you're on. Go back to the teachings and listen to the word again. Don't think because you heard the message one time that you got it because a lot of times you miss things. Even when I'm listening to other messages, I listen to messages over and over again because you miss things or or the Holy Spirit may highlight things to you. So I want to encourage you to go back and listen to the replay. Go back and listen to the message. When you become discouraged, when things are coming against you, come back and listen to the word. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So listen to the replay. Or you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed as of yet, the YouTube channel is Mark, my name, Mark, M-A-R-C, S. Bryant, B-R-Y-A-N-T. Um, so you can also uh, go to the YouTube channel and also listen to these videos. We thank God for Minister Will, Will, Willie Torrey, who takes all of these messages and has placed them on the YouTube channel. That way you can watch me on your TVs. You can watch me on your flat screen televisions. You can watch me on all of your devices from YouTube. Amen. So the first week we talked about your faith and it was from Mark 5, 25 to 34. And the key scripture was uh, Mark 5, 34 from the New Living Translation. And Jesus said, and he said to her daughter, your faith, those two words, has made you well. Go in peace, your suffering is over. And we talked the first week about your faith. And this is what I want you to know now. Oh, that's good, Minister Step. I want you to know that your faith will make you whole. It's gonna take your faith, those two words, your faith, if the Lord told the woman with issue of blood after 12 years, it was her faith that made her whole. I'm telling you today, it's going to be your faith, your trust, your belief in God that's going to make you whole, that's going to bring you out of situations and circumstances. It's going to be your faith, not nobody else's faith, your faith. It's going to take your faith to save you. It's going to take your faith to heal you. It's going to take your faith to work a miracle. It's going to take your your faith for a breakthrough. It's going to take your faith for more finances. It's going to take your faith to deliver and to set free your family. Your faith has made you well. Hallelujah. How do I get my faith built up? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God builds our faith. Listening to faith filled message builds our faith. Amen. So we need our faith built so we can continue to believe God in spite of opposition in spite of warfare and in spite of the things that we face in the natural realm. So the first week was your faith. The second week, which was last week, the lesson was taken from John, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 15. Verses 1 through 15. John, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 15. Happy Sunday, Cynthia Cordona. Happy Sunday to you. The second week message was taken from John, the fifth chapter, verse six, it says, when Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill or sick for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? Glory to God. That's my message to you. Would you like to get well? Would you like to do better? Would you like to see your situations change? Would you like to get well? And the man asked him, he said, I can't, sir. The sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up, someone else always get there ahead of me. When Jesus asked him, would you like to get well? He didn't ask him all that. He didn't ask him why you've been at this pool for 38 years. He didn't ask him, do you have somebody to help you in the pool? He asked him one simple question. Somebody put up the word one. He said, would you like to get well? That's all he asked him. His answer should have been yes. Let me tell you something. Don't you never answer God what I can't. You tell you if God asks you a question, you answer him with a yes or with a no. Jesus asked him, would you like to get well? Glory to God. That was a question. Number seven, you don't ask Jesus. You don't tell Jesus I can't. You, he should have said yes. I, yes, yes. I want to be well. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. That's like somebody asking you, would you like to be debt free? You, you, if somebody asks you, would you like to be debt free? Yes. Would you like to go on vacation? Yes. Would you like to feel better? Yes. Would you like to do better? Yes. Would you like to be debt free? Yes, 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 and yes. 
our answer should be yes. Don't don't uh, ask. Don't give God uh, a complaint. Don't come there murmuring and complaining. Don't say you can't say yes. Amen. Glory to God. And verse 80 said, Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. And it, verse 9 says, instantly the man was healed. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for instantly. When you say yes to God's will and you say yes, when you choose to believe God's word, you don't know how God's going to move. And I prophesy that God will move for you all instantly. That the things that you have before the Lord, the people that you're praying for, the people that you believe in God for, your family, your friends, your loved ones, that you would have an instant and a quick yes. Amen. Glory to God. Sunshine, necessary vacation. Yes, please. Amen. So I'm believing that God's going to do some things for you instantly. When God asks you a question, don't give him an excuse. Don't tell him what you can't do. He said, would you like to get well? And that was our second week. Would you like to get well? Would you like to do better? Would you like to see your circumstances change? Would you like to see your marriage get better? Would you like to see your loved ones saved? Would you like to get well? That was week number two. Amen. And today's message is going to come from the same scripture from first one, but I'm reading it from the Passion Translation. So we're going to go back to Mark 5, 25 through 34. So we're just going to take it from a different spin. Who could be the first person to write spin? Amen. We're going to take Mark 5, 25, the scripture from the first lesson, and we're going to add uh, a different spin to it on today. Amen. And we're reading it from a different version. So I'm reading for you this morning, uh, Mark the fifth chapter, verses 25 through 34 from the Passion Translation. I see my students typing in spin. All right. All right. So we're, let's go. Let's go to work. Let's let's see what the Lord is saying this morning. Mark 5, 25 through 34 from the Passion Translation. So it's going to read differently than the one I read on the first week. It says now, in the crowd that day was a woman who had suffered horribly from continual bleeding for 12 years. She had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors. Yet, in spite of spending all she had excuse me, on their treatments, she was getting worse instead of better. When she heard of Jesus' healing power, she touched, she, I'm sorry, she pushed through the crowd and came up from behind him and touched his prayer shawl. For she kept saying to herself, if I could touch even his clothes, I know I will be healed. As soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. That's so good. Hallelujah. She touched the Lord. Amen. She released her faith. And, and it says instantly. Uh, let me go back. I lost my place. Mm -hmm. Oh, she said, if I could touch even his clothes, I know I'll be, I will be healed. As soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. And Father, we just released the immediately and the instantly of God to flow in people's life, Father God, that whatever's going on in their life, that it would stop immediately, Lord. Whatever your people need, that you would instantly bring healing, that you would instantly bring breakthrough, that you would instantly bring change, that you would instantly open doors in Jesus' name. Let's go back to this verse. It says, for she kept saying to herself, I want to ask you a question. What are you saying to yourself when you're in that hard place? What are you saying to yourself when you're in the middle of adversity? What are you saying to yourself when things aren't coming together? Are you speaking life or are you speaking how you feel? Are you speaking the situation? Are you speaking the problem and not the answer? Are you speaking negativity? Glory to God. And I know a lot of Christians speak a lot of negative. I'm telling you, you got to watch what you say. Let me take a break for that. You got to watch what you say. A lot of negative, a lot of Christians are very, very negative. Joyce Meyer said years ago, there are a lot of unbelieving believers. Amen. If you want to see where a person is in their Christian walk, listen to what they say. You have what you say. You have to let God, you got to speak God's word. You got to speak God's truth. You have to stop being so negative. A lot of Christians love the Lord, but they're very, very negative. Amen. Just think about that. I want that to dwell in you because Christians are very negative. We should not be negative. We should be speaking the word of God. Happy Sunday, Vegeta Wise. We should be speaking God's word. We should be speaking what we want to see. And we should be speaking faith. We shouldn't be speaking, I can't. We shouldn't be speaking, I'm broke. We shouldn't be speaking, I'm sick. You know what I'm saying? We, these may be 
some symptoms, but we got to speak the truth of God's word. Amen. We have to speak what we want to see happen. We have to speak what we want to see manifest. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And most times we defeat ourselves by the things we say out of our own mouths. Amen. Amen. Watch what you say. Let people hold you accountable to what you say. Amen. Stop being so negative. We have a negative mindset. That's not good. A negative mindset. We should have a faith mindset. We should always be expecting to see. David said, I would have fainted. Psalm 27, 14, 13. He said, I, David said, I would have fainted. I would have given up unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What are you believing to see? Glory to God. What? Listen to this. After she had been sick for 12 years, for she kept saying to herself, reading from the Passion Translation, if I could even, if I could touch even his clothes, I know I will be healed. If I could touch even his clothes, I know I will be healed. She was speaking life. She knew she needed to get to Jesus. She knew that she had been sick for 12 years. She knew the doctors couldn't help her. She knew that now she's broke. So she, her only hope and her faith and her trust was in if I can just get to Jesus. I don't have to touch him. If I can touch his clothes, if I can touch his robe, I know that my situation will change. I know that my situation will shift. I know that the healing will come in my body. What are you saying when you're in the hard places of your life? Amen. If you're sick in your body, you should say, Lord, I thank you that you're my healer and that I'm getting better and better and stronger and stronger in Jesus name. How do you feel? The Lord, you can say I'm going through a challenge, but the Lord is my healer. I'm getting better and better and stronger and stronger. And let me tell you something. It's very challenging to say the right thing when the wrong thing is happening. Amen. Y'all is quiet out here. I must be listening. Amen. For she kept saying, if I can touch but his clothes, I know I will be healed. As soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. Jesus knew at once that someone had touched him for he felt the power that always surged around him, always surged around him and passed through him for someone to be healed. He turned and spoke to the crowd saying, who touched my clothes? His disciples answered, what do you mean who touched you? Look at this huge crowd. They're all pressing up against you. But Jesus' eyes swept across the crowd looking for the one who had touched him for healing. When the woman who experienced this miracle realized what had happened to her, she came before him trembling with fear and threw herself down at his feet saying, I was the one who touched you. Amen. Glory to God. And she told him her story of what had just happened. Then Jesus said to her daughter, because you dare to believe your faith has healed you, go with peace in your heart and be free from your suffering. Glory to God. And that's where our thoughts are going to be taken in verse 34 from the Passion Translation. Mark 5, 25 through 34 from the Passion Translation. Then Jesus said to her, daughter, because you dared to believe your faith has healed you, go with peace in your heart and be free from your suffering. And that's what I'm going to speak to you today from dare to believe. If you want to type it in, type it in, dare to believe. Amen. Father, we thank you for moving. We just released, Father God, supernatural healing for the people in Texas, Father God, that you move supernaturally, Father God. Even as you move with this woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, Father, we declare and decree that you would cause the power to be turned back on in Texas for those that are still without power, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, you are a very present help in the time of trouble. So, Father, we just ask that you anoint and you strengthen everyone in the state of Texas that is going through without their light and without their power, Lord. Grace them and strengthen them to go on. And, Father, we release the suddenlies of God to hit the state of Texas. In Jesus' name, amen. And let's continue to keep Texas in prayer that God will restore the lights and restore the power and restore that state of Texas in Jesus' name. We love you, Vegeta, and we will continue to pray for you until all the power is on. Amen. Because power belongs to God. Dare to believe. You have to dare to believe in spite of opposition. You have to dare to believe in spite of warfare. This woman with the issue of blood, she dared to believe even though she had suffered for 12 long years. Listen to that, y'all. She suffered for 12 years. But she dared to believe. I want to encourage you today. You have to dare to believe. Dare to believe that your situation is going to change. 
Dare to believe that God's going to strengthen and heal your body. Dare to believe that God will bring you out of debt. Dare to believe that God can open up a door that will change your life. That he, that Dare to believe that God can allow you to meet someone that will be a blessing in your life. Dare to believe for divine connections. You have to dare to believe in spite of the odds, in spite of the opposition, in spite of the warfare, in spite of what you see in the natural realm. You have to dare to believe. Father, we thank you. We believe you. This woman dared to believe in spite of suffering a horrible sickness, in spite of suffering her continual bleeding, she dared to believe and she reached out and she touched the Lord and he healed her instantly. And he said, daughter, he didn't say my robe has made you well. He didn't say my, when you touched me, it made you well. He said, your faith, because you dare to believe, your faith has healed you. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, it's going to be your faith in God that's going to bring you out. It's going to be your faith in God that's going to bring deliverance. It's going to be your faith in God that's going to bring restoration. It's going to be because you dare to believe you're going to see the goodness of the Lord. Where? In the land of the living. I'm going to take a sip to that. Hallelujah. Dare to believe. Dare to stand on the word. Dare to trust God. Amen. Dare to believe. Amen. I'm going to read a few faith scriptures and then I'm going to close out. Hebrews 11 one says, now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. 2 Corinthians 5.7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11.6 says, and without, for, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnest, earnestly seek him. James 1, 3 says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let me tell you something. Your faith will always be tested. Your faith will always go through. Your faith will be tested. But as your faith is tested and as you stand the test of time, it develops perseverance. That is James 1 and 3. Glory to God. That's why you're able to take a licking and keep on ticking because God has given you perseverance from the things that you have gone through. Glory to God. Mark 9, 23, it says, if you can, glory to God, that's a question mark. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Uh, Matthew 21, 22, it says, if you believe, you, re you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Uh, uh, Hebrews 11, 11, listen to this. This is a good one. Hebrews 11, 11 says, and by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, she was past the age to give birth. It says Hebrews 11, 11, and by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, wasn't able to bear children. Why? Because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. Amen. Uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. James 5, 14 and 15. It says, is anyone among you sick? Amen. Listen to this. If anybody is among you sick, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith, hallelujah, will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. I love that. It says, and the prayer offered in faith. Let me tell you something. When people pray for you, or when you pray, make sure that you're praying in faith. You don't need nobody praying for you in doubt and unbelief and fear. And I hope so. You need people praying for you in faith and praying the word. Amen. And if you know what God's will is for your life, you don't have to say, Lord, if it's your will to be healed. The Lord said it is your will to be healed. For I was wounded for your transgressions. I was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. It's just like you praying if it's God's will to be saved. It is God's will that you be saved. He said, I came to seek and to save those that are lost. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 17, 20. He replied, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing. Somebody type in nothing. Nothing will be impossible for you. We have to get to the place where we know that nothing oh, is impossible with the Lord. Amen. Sometimes when I sit here, my, my feet fall asleep. Wake up, feet. Amen. All right. Romans 10, 11, it says, as, as the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Keep on believing in the Lord. Keep trusting in the Lord. Amen. John 20, 29. 
Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those that have not seen and yet believe. Amen. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have paid peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Mark eleven twenty four. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you receive it, it will be yours in Jesus name. Amen. And we, while we're waiting on God to do things, we have to be patient. Somebody type in patient. We believe that it's done, but some, most times we have to be patient because it's not your timing. It's the timing of God. God, give us patience and perseverance to endure until you come through in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. James 1 and 6. It says, but when you ask, this is good, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. When you ask God for something, you've got to keep your faith in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. When you're believing God for things, let me tell you something. Fill your heart. Let your heart be full of faith and believe in God. Sometimes the enemy will come against your mind, your thoughts, but keep your heart full of faith. Amen. And cast down the things that come against your mind, the negativity, the fear, the doubt, the unbelief. You take authority over your mind and say, no devil, God's going to come through for me and I release this in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, the last scripture I want to read for you is very important. It's a good scripture. It's Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And I want you all to really take heed to this scripture. Oh, take heed to the scripture and let it rest in your soul. It's Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And I want to encourage you all to read this scripture this week at least once a day. This is your this scripture is your medicine at least once a day. Read the scripture. Put it on your phone, put it on your, your face, your screenplay on your phone, your screen, your screen on your phone or whatever. This is a good scripture for you to hold on to and to just walk it out because you're going to need this scripture this week. Somebody say this week. It's Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, don't worry about anything. Let me just let that marinate. Because a lot of you up here, you're worrying about things, you're worrying about stuff, and you're worrying about people. The Lord is saying to you today, don't worry about anything. Well, what should I do, Pastor Mark? You should do what I said in, that, in the message. Dare to believe. Amen. Don't worry. And sometimes we can say, oh, I, I just worry. I just No, God didn't call you to worry. He's called you to walk by faith and not by sight. God does not want any of you that are listening to worry. No, no, no. I'm going to give you uh, instructions. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, don't worry about anything, comma. Instead, instead, what should I do? Pray about everything. Put everything in the hands of the Lord. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, casting all your cares, your concerns upon the Lord. Why? Because he cares for you. Amen. Worrying won't change a thing. Worrying won't solve a problem. You have to stop worrying and trust God. This month is faith month. I want to build your faith this month that no, no matter what comes your way, that you are full of faith. That if all your power is out, like it is in Texas, as Vegeta Weiss has told me, people are still without power. How is your faith? Are you walking around murmuring? Are you walking around complaining? Are you thanking God for what you have? It's that your faith has to be tested when you're under trial. What you know, it's easy to say we trust God and we believe God when everything's going well. But what are you saying when your power's out and your power's been out? What are you saying when you don't have any lights? What are you saying when your money is low? What are you saying when your kids is acting up? What are you saying when your money is funny in your chain? What are you saying? Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? Or are you speaking with a double tongue? Amen. What are you saying? What are you saying in the midst of your fiery furnace? What are you saying in that hot situation? Glory to God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in a fiery furnace, and God turned up the heat seven times hotter. And what happened? They, did, they didn't bow their knee to Baal. But let me tell you something. What happened was God was the fourth man in that furnace with her. And let me tell you something. When they came out of that fiery furnace, they didn't even smell like smoke, and not one hair on their hinge, their hair was hinged or, or, or singed. Amen. And the Lord is saying, I am the God that's with you in your fiery furnace. 
I am the God that's with you in that hard place. I am the God that's with you while you're going through this health challenge. I am the God that's with you while your power is out. I am the God that is with you. So look to me, trust me day by day, minute by minute. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Philippians 4, 6 and 7 saying, don't worry about anything. Not your children, not your grandchildren, not your job, not your money, not your boo and not your who. <laughs> don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. You have to put it all in God's hands. Put it all in God's hands. Put everybody in the hands of God. It says here, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then, then what, Pastor Mark? When you did all of what you did, what I just said, it says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. Glory to God. The Lord says in his word, Isaiah 26 and 3, I will keep you and perfect peace as you keep your mind stayed on me. You can't keep your mind on the prop on the problem and be in peace. You can't keep your mind in chaos and be in peace. You can't keep your mind on anxiety and be in peace. He said, I will keep you in perfect peace as you keep your mind stayed on me. Amen. And I'm not saying it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's doable. If God wants you to do it, it is doable in Jesus name. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. God can give you such peace in the midst of your storm. You won't even understand why you're in peace, but it's the peace of God. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. That's a good place for you to praise him. I'm going to read it one more time and then I'm going to close us out. And we're going to be getting out of church a little early today. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And the only way that you can do this is, is if you do what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. How do I acknowledge him? I acknowledge him when I pray. I acknowledge him when I give him every situation, when I give him every circumstance, when I give him the hard thing I'm going through right now. Even as this woman with the issue of blood, she didn't go through for 12 minutes. This woman went through for 12 years, 12 years of suffering, 12 years of bleeding, 12 years of, of just going from doctor to doctor with no hope in sight. But she held on to her faith. We're going to close with today's scripture. Mark 5, 25, 34. Then Jesus said to her daughter, because you dared to believe. Your faith has healed you. Go with peace in your heart. There's that peace again. Peace in your heart and be free from your suffering. I, I leave with you today. I close with you today for you to dare to believe in spite of the opposition. Dare to believe in spite of the warfare. Dare to believe in spite of your money being funny, your change being strange. Dare to believe in spite of the warfare. Dare to believe in spite of what you're going through. Dare to believe. Let's give God praise. I'm done. Hallelujah. Let's pray y'all. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you're, you're building our faith. Your word declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Father, we thank you for your word this morning. And Father, we thank you that our faith and our trust and our reliance on you will conquer anything the world of the enemy will bring our way, Lord. Teach us to walk by faith and not by sight. Teach us to speak life over our situations. Teach us, Father God, to bind the hand of the enemy from our lives in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we walk by faith and not by sight. We thank you that greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. So Father, we thank you that we will dare to believe you against all odds, and we thank you for bringing us through in Jesus' name. Bringing us through in victory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you were blessed, give God a praise or just say amen or have a blessed day. Amen. So we bless the Lord today. 
This is our faith lesson for today. I pray that it stirred you and I pray that you will dare to believe as the Lord told the woman with the issue of blood, dare to believe because you dare to believe your faith has healed you because you dare to believe God's going to bring you out. I love you this morning. I pray that this bless you. If you haven't already, please share this message and continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Have a blessed day. Enjoy your vacation. Enjoy your day off. Uh, stay in touch with me. I speak healing over you, uh, Keisha and your mom and your family. Happy Sunday, Rita Newton. Good to see you on. Amen. Oh, also this week, if you're in the Rawway, New Jersey area, if you're in the Rawway area, if you're in the Rawway, New Jersey area, happy Sunday, Liz Smith. Um, I will be teaching this week, uh, Second Baptist Church, Rawway, 378 East Milton Avenue, is having vacation Bible school for all ages. So um, I will be teaching the adult class. So uh, vacation Bible school starts tomorrow night, which is Monday, July 22nd through Friday night. They will have a vacation Bible school. 5.30 is supper time. 6 to 8 is the classes. I'll be teaching the adult class at 6 p.m. every night, Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Then that Saturday, they're having a vacation Bible school uh, cookout. I believe it's going to be outside of the church. So if you want to come, let me know. Love you all. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed week. Love you all in Jesus' name.